Hello and welcome to another Frontier Precision Tech Talk. My name is Dylan Jones and today I'm going to be giving you an uh, overview on the Trimble MX7 mobile imaging software. We're going to start by connecting to the system, editing the vehicle and capture settings, creating a new mission, creating a backup of that mission, and then powering off the system. We'll begin by connecting to the MX7 through Wi-Fi. So depending on the device you're using, you're going to go into your Wi-Fi settings, choose your Trimble MX7 that's nearby and broadcasting. You might have to enter in the passcode, which can be found on the power box. And then once connected, we're going to open up a web browser. We're going to type in the IP address, which is 192.168.173.1. And that will open open up the TMI interface. Okay, we're going to start in the settings. In the settings, we can uh, change the vehicle and capture parameters. In the vehicle parameters, um, it's important to note the installation height, whether or not you're using a DMI and GAMS. Okay, so enter in the proper installation height. This is in meters. Turn on a DMI if you're using a, a wheel encoder, and then GAMS if you're using a secondary antenna. So I'm going to save my vehicle settings. We could change the name of the vehicle and the description. And we can uh, also populate multiple vehicles in the list. Same goes for the capture settings. In the capture settings, if we go into the, to the edit there, uh, we can give it a name description and then the camera trigger type. So how is the camera being triggered to take the pictures? Is it going to be uh, based off a distance or a fixed frame rate? Okay, so this is also in meters. We can go from one meter to 10 meters, or we can go from a picture every one second to 10 pictures a second. So we can actually take uh, quite a few pictures as we uh, drive along the road. Okay, so we're going to... Um, set our trigger type here. I'm going to keep it at three meters for my urban area. Click Save. Uh, and then we have language and a left-handed operation option. So once you've uh, configured your settings properly, we can click the X in the top right corner. And then we can start a new mission. So in our mission setup, we'll give the mission a name. We need to choose the capture parameters the vehicle parameters and click next. It's going to ask if we want to start the mission. I'll click start and at this time it's going to initialize all the components. When the mission starts we'll want to start driving the vehicle around to warm up the IMU and GNSS sensors. So from the camera view we can, we can play around with the brightness. Um, when it's blacked out like this, that means it's using an auto brightness. If we click auto, we can then manually change our brightness. Okay. We can also click on each individual camera. So we can see what's going on either above, to the side, to the rear of the vehicle, or to the front. And this is a live video stream of what the camera is seeing. From the navigation screen, if we click on navigation on the right hand side, we can get our RMS values, status, and sky plot. So when, when you start driving around, you'll see that your accuracy RMS sliders will um, start to uh, to move into the green area. Once you're in the green area, you can start recording um, with uh, confidence that you'll have a, a decent solution in the end. Okay, so we'll drive around until our sliders are totally in the green, and then we can hit the record button to start recording our images. Um, if you start, if you click record before you're in the in the uh, in good status area in the green. Um, it'll actually prompt you with a warning message or an error message depending on, on how your settings are set up. So we'll collect all of our data. 
uh, using the navigation in the camera menus here, using the record and stop button. And then once we're finished with our um, area of, of capture, we're going to click the X button in the right hand corner to end our mission. So we'll click complete mission. And at this point, we can back up the data to an external drive. All the data is written to the internal hard drive of the MX-7. So we need to transfer that off to an external device. So we can plug in um, a, USB, uh, a USB hard drive into the side of the MX-7. So once I do that, we can click scan for external devices. It should find your device there. It'll give you a, an available disk space and the backup size here. In the mission history, we're going to uh, check mark which, um, which missions that we want to transfer or which ones we want to back up. Um, you have an info button. You can press to get the mission size, start, end time, and then whether the mission has uh, been backed up prior to um, this moment. That's also indicated by the backup status. And we can also delete missions as well. So with the mission selected that we want to transfer, we'll click the Start Backup button. It will back up to your external drive. And then at this point, we can either delete or um, simply uh, complete our backup. And we're back at the main menu of uh, the, the TMI interface. At this time, we can shut down the system by clicking the power icon in the right hand corner and then press shutdown. It's about a 30 second shutdown. Um, and then once you are um, confirmed that the system's ready to be powered off, you will um, boot off the system by pressing the power button on the power box. That will complete today's Tech Talk. I'd like to thank you for joining us and learning a little bit more about the Trimble MX-7 software interface. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at one of our regional offices or through the Frontier Precision website. Thank you.